What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Of course, my name is Gareth from Park Cameras, as it always is. However, today we're gonna to be looking at this. It's the Nikon Z6 II, or Z6 Mark II. I'm not exactly sure uh, how you're supposed to say this particular one, but I'm gonna say Z6 Mark II going forward. I've been out and about shooting with this camera, doing a bit of photos, doing a bit of video, doing a few different things actually, really kind of testing it out. I've been using the 24 to 70 millimeter F4 lens, which actually is a particularly nice lens. You know, would I like to use the F2.8? Sure. Would I like to use a prime lens? Sure. But actually, for me specifically, I use a lot of 24 to 70 F4, 24 to 105 F4. F4 is a lovely aperture to be shooting at anyway. So actually this has been a really nice lens to test this camera out with. So before we get started, there's a couple of things to note. First of all, if you wanna check out the camera for yourself, there's links down in the description to check out the, the price, the description, the full actual spec as well. So you can go check that out for yourself. Secondly, we've already done a first look on this camera where we talked about the full spec, and that was a much more of a technical video. In this particular video, I wanna look at this from the perspective of actually shooting with the camera, what it's like to shoot with. So probably a little bit less tech heavy, a little bit less spec heavy, and a little bit more kind of ease of use, you know, usability, actually time with the camera, what it's like to use. And don't worry, we are going to talk about the autofocus for sure. So don't worry about that, because I know a lot of you are really interested in how the autofocus works on this camera. Now, even with those two points made, I should also mention one more thing, which is that I don't really shoot Nikon that much. I just don't use them that much. That's not because of any particular decision. There's no actual reason for it. It's just something that's happened. So I'm coming to this reasonably fresh, you know, I don't have any preconceived notions of Nikon as a brand or really of their cameras as well. I have, of course, used things like the Z7, the D850, the D810, a bunch of their lenses as well. But it's interesting to come into using this camera without loads of ideas in my head about it before I even use it. Let's start off with talking about the image quality from this camera. Now, let's talk about photos first of all. There's something about this camera that as I'm shooting with it, I love, I just love the look of the colors, the contrast, just the image quality is really nice. Whether I'm shooting landscape or portrait, it just looked good through the viewfinder. It looked good on the back screen. And of course, when I got back, it looked good on the computer as well. So I didn't really have any doubts that the images were gonna look nice because this is, you know, the Z6 Mark II. It's, it's not a super low-end camera or anything like that. So, you know, I, th I thought they would probably look good, but they certainly do. In fact, they're noticeably nice looking to me, which isn't always the case with cameras. You know, they, you expect pictures to look decent, but with this camera in particular, they I noticed that I actually thought these pictures looked really good as I was shooting them. One of the biggest things that a lot of you have been asking about is autofocus. Now, I tested this out, landscape, kind of close-up stuff, like little mushrooms I found in the forest. Portrait was a big one as well. And I'm coming into this using other brands who have kind of nailed things like eye autofocus and things like that. So I was interested to see how this was gonna stack up, but I've gotta to be totally honest, really well, really well. Because the eye autofocus on this Grab the eye, and I wasn't even half pressing the shutter, it would just follow the eye around the screen the whole time while I was there composing my shot. No issue, didn't lose it for a second. With hair in front of the face, with hair back, moving the head around, it worked really well. And for portraits, I never, I didn't have a single issue with eye autofocus, no matter whether I was closer, further away, it just worked the whole time. While I was shooting landscape, the close-up of the mushroom, it just locked on, it seemed to get what I was going for, and when it didn't, and it would lock onto a closer tree and I wanted to focus further away, I just tapped the screen, and it would focus to that point. Super easy. And then without even me telling it to, it would track that point. So I'd press the point, and then as I recomposed the shot, it would track the point that I've, I've actually pressed. And as soon as I realized that's what the camera was doing, it made it incredibly easy to focus for landscapes, to focus for really anything at all, which is a really big plus. You know, because you don't know how autofocus is gonna work until you really kind of test it out like that, but worked with no problem at all. Now that was for photo, so that was great for photo, but for video, I was also using autofocus because, you know, I know how many focus is gonna work, it's gonna work basically as well as I am able to do it. So I wanna try out the autofocus. And I'm happy to report, I didn't have a single issue where it fell off, where it was hunting, where it didn't know what I wanted to focus on. I was able to press points to actually select focus points, and I was able to let the camera work it out for itself as well. 
every single time. It would focus on my subject. It would focus exactly, seemed to be at least, where I wanted to focus. No hunting back and forth, no scanning around, no going crazy just worked. And that is ultimately all I really want from an autofocus system. I just want it to work. I don't even really want to be thinking about it. I was moving with my subject. So Matilda was walking and I was walking behind her. I was walking around the side of her. I was walking around the other side of her. And it would just, it would just keep focus on her. No problem. Just the whole time without losing it at all. Not even for a moment. And that's a big deal. That's a really big deal because it means that I'm not even thinking about autofocus. I'm thinking about composition. I'm uh, thinking about where I'm going to be standing so that I don't fall over with the camera or something like that. Now, speaking about those shots in particular where Matilda was walking and I was following her or walking around her, I was shooting around about 50 mil because I don't want to go too tight with the focal length because it just makes it harder and harder to keep the, the shot from being shaky. So about 50 mil is where I was going for. But actually, while I was shooting, it was very obvious how much the in-body image stabilization was doing. It was keeping the shot remarkably stable, really quite shockingly stable. And actually, that made it easy, really easy to shoot handheld video. Uh, I didn't really have any problems with walking while shooting. So I'll often do kind of a, a panning shot like that or something like that while standing still, but actually while walking, sometimes that can be a little bit dodgy. Sometimes you get the shake. And actually with this camera, I didn't have to worry as much about that. Of course, you're never gonna get rid of that. Even if you use a gimbal, you're never fully gonna get rid of that walking shake. But with this camera, with the in-body image stabilization, I felt like I was able to basically walk with the camera. And as long as I was, you know, thinking about it a little bit, I was able to keep it pretty steady and that is impressive. That is a big deal for any videographer or filmmaker or anything like that because that makes this very easy to use. If you can run and gun shoots and be sure you're gonna get pretty stable shots that you can probably then tweak a little bit in post, you know, to just stabilize them a little bit, that's a huge thing. That's a really big thing. Couple that with the autofocus and the actual image quality, that's great. Now at the time of using this camera, it can shoot 4K up to 30 frames a second. And of course, full HD, 1080p up to 120 frames a second. So you've got the nice slow motion for the 1080p. The 4K 30 frames a second is great, but it will be 60 frames a second. There's an, a firmware update coming at some point in the future that will bring that up to 60 frames a second. It'll do 10 bit N log to an external recorder as well. So if you're using something like the Atomos or something like that, you're gonna be able to get that nice 10 bit N log video as well as ProRes RAW as well. Ultimately then that seems to mean that this is gonna be a pretty decent video option for any videographers or filmmakers out there who want to be able to use this because couple that with the autofocus and of course the in-body image stabilization, this makes this a great system for running and gunning a shoot. But let's talk about what this is like to actually shoot with, the feel, the design, what this is like. Now, first of all, it's very, very comfortable to shoot with. I don't know if Nikon have actually made the grip any bigger, but it feels really nice in the hands. It feels very comfortable. I've got quite big hands, but it fits around this grip really, really nice. The buttons are all laid out very ergonomically. And of course you've got both the D-pad on the back and the joystick which I always appreciate, as well as a dedicated ISO button on the top here and exposure compensation and stuff like that. And then you've got a separate shutter and movie record button, which I also really appreciate. But one thing I particularly liked on the top of the camera, which I found myself using a lot, even though I didn't expect to, is the little screen on the actual top, which reads out a lot of the settings that you're using. So you can change the settings without looking at the back screen, without having to look through the viewfinder. They're all on the top screen. And this is something that I didn't, realize I was missing on some other cameras, which I now realize I really, really like. It just was very easy and straightforward and actually was saving me a bit of time. It's just easy to use, which is always a big plus. Of course, if you're interested in this camera, you've probably already heard this now has dual card slots. A big deal because on the original Z6, that was obviously a little bit of a mistake. That was obviously something that I, I imagine Nikon probably regret, but no worries, they fixed it. There's now dual card slots on this camera, which is a big deal, especially for anyone looking to use this for wedding photography or wedding videography or any event stuff where it's really critical. You can't reshoot the stuff and it has to be backed up. That is a, a great thing to have available to you in the camera. Of course, I totally understand if you're sitting there thinking, it's, it is great, sure, but I would also just expect it. It's not like it's this incredibly big deal 
that uh, wow they've done this but yes and i agree it, it should be in there it's kind of a no-brainer but it is and that's really good i have really enjoyed using this camera like i said I don't use nikon as often as perhaps i should or as perhaps as i'd like but it does feel really good it, it's, it's a fun camera to use because it's comfortable it's ergonomic and it's got a lot of settings that I really like. It doesn't completely reinvent the wheel. Let's not pretend that it does. It's not like it's going crazy with some really outlandish new spec or, or new feature. But what it does is just enhance an already really decent camera, which was the Z6. It brings it up to date a little bit more, adds in some stuff, and gives you a nice, reliable system, which I think is, is really nice. Now, of course, like I say, there's full links down in the description to go and check this camera out for yourself, the full spec, the description, pricing, all that kind of stuff. Of course, if you have any questions about the camera yourself, pop it down in the comments. I will do my best to get back to you ASAP. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe as well. We've got new content all the time, tutorials, reviews, all kinds of stuff. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.